from the hot stuff in my coverage channel. Today's video is about the throttle position sensor and the idle air control valve. On the past two videos I explained that the fuel is delivered to the fuel injectors by the fuel pump and how the entire process is controlled by the engine control computer. I wanted to break down the videos that way each system is explained separately and it will be easier to understand and it will make more sense. So today, like I just mentioned, we're going to focus on how the throttle position sensor and the idle air control valve work. Not different than the previous videos, I'm going to bring the camera up close so you can see what these parts are, what they look like, that way you can identify them in your own vehicles. Okay, so first a very short recap before we move on to the next section. So like I said, the, the previous videos explained how the fuel pump delivers the fuel to the fuel injectors. Okay, so whether it's a multi-port fuel injector engine or a throttle body injected engine. So that's already been explained and if you did not see the previous videos uh, you can always watch them that way you can see how the operation of the sensors is going to affect the fuel delivery. So no different than every other process in the entire vehicle the engine control computer is going to be the one that controls the outputs based on the inputs that it gets from different sensors. So for example the uh, throttle position sensor, okay, regardless of the make, here's a Toyota, okay, here's the General Motors, and here's uh, General Motors throttle body. So the throttle position sensor would be one of the ones that is considered an input, right? Because it's sending the information to the computer and it's enabling this ECM to know the position of the throttle. So if you look at each one, uh, the throttle position sensor is always going to be located in the opposite side of the throttle cable. Okay, So that way as the butterflies move, as the throttle opens like that, the signal that is sending back to the computer is going to vary. And that's where all of them. So let's let's grab this one right here. Okay, so this is for a multi-port. This was a throttle body, pretty obvious right here, the injectors. So here's a throttle body of a multi-port fuel injector engine. Same thing. Uh, you have the throttle cable and then here's the throttle position sensor right on the opposite side. So this sensor how it works it, it normally, okay, for the most part, it has three wires. It's gonna have a ground. It's gonna, you know, you can see in there. You can see three. So it's gonna have a ground. It's gonna have a power, which is five volts, and it's gonna have the signal that goes back to the computer. So the ECM is gonna send the the ground and the current, the, the five volts. When the throttle is not open, when it's at idle, okay the voltage that is going to be sending back is usually about half a volt and it's going to vary depending the vehicle and the make but most of them are going to stay within that range so as you open the throttle as you accelerate okay all the way to full throttle the signal that is being sent back to the ECM is going to go from the half a volt all the way to the entire five volts when it's full throttle that way the ECM knows that it needs to vary the width, the pulse width to each injector that way they can inject more fuel to the engine as the demand increases because if that didn't happen if the injectors stay constant meaning they're injecting the same amount of fuel and all of a sudden you you're at a wide open throttle the, the mixture would be so lean that it would create engine problems and that engine probably wouldn't last very long. So that is the throttle position sensor. Now the idle air control valve, let me take it off so you can see it. And it's called different names by different makers, you know, uh, idle speed motor, idle air control valve, you know, they are, they're all going to call it some different, but the most common is idle air control valve. So if you look at inside where it goes, there's the cavity and there's what the part looks like. 
So this part fits in there, and this moves. Okay, this this part extends and contracts to enable more air to enter the engine. So when the car is at idle, for example, you obviously you're not accelerating, right? So there is a slight amount of air that this part is enabling to go through uh, past this cavity right here and is going into the engine. Okay, so a little bit of air. It's almost like if you were accelerating slightly, okay? Almost the same effect. Uh, but it's happening by a signal being sent by the computer. So, the computer is sending a signal that's already been predetermined by the factory, by every manufacturer. So, this needle, obviously when it's all the way in, then there is, it's not letting any air go through, right? So, it's going to contract slightly and it's going to let some air pass through so the engine can have air to be mixed with the fuel. Now, this part is always going to be moving you know, in and out. For example, uh, when the car is in park, if it's automatic, it's going to be open slightly and then as soon as you put it in drive, if you pay really close attention to your vehicle, the RPMs want to drop first then the signal changes by the computer because now it knows it's in drive when you put it in drive or in reverse then it's going to enable a little bit more air to go through and if that wasn't enough your vehicle has air conditioning same thing right so you turn your air conditioning on then that would bug the engine even more so at that point this part is going to enable even more air to go through so the RPM stay constant okay whatever they already determined whether it's 750 RPM, 800 RPM, it will, same thing, it will depend on the manufacturer, but this part will enable to maintain the same RPMs when your vehicle is at quote unquote idle, no matter whether it's in park, whether it's in neutral, whether you have the air conditioning on, so there's different demands that, you, that this engine is going to be getting, and this is the part, the idle air control valve, that's going to keep those RPMs constant. So if you have a vehicle that every time you put it in park it wants to die or you turn the air conditioning on and it wants to die, it's very likely that the problem is the idle air control valve. It could be defective. The passages could be so clogged in here with carbon that the air is not going through. So you might want to remove this part, take a peek and see what's going on with it. And like I said, you know, every single make is going to have it and it's going to be calling it something different. So here's the Toyota, okay? Here's your throttle position sensor, I already mentioned that. Here's your idle air control valve, idle speed motor, and it operates the same way, okay? So regardless of the make, you will always see, you will always see those two parts. You will see a throttle position sensor and then you will see the idle air control valve, which as I was describing, this will be an input that is giving the information to the computer. This is an output that is reacting to the signal that is being sent to make sure that the engine functions in a particular way. Now there is something to consider, okay? I'm going to grab this part so I can explain it. But before I go into detail, there's something very important. Vehicles that are cable operated, okay, which uh, they are just about every fuel injected vehicle that was built in the 80s, 90s, even to you know the 2000s, the majority will have a throttle cable, okay, that would go hooked right here. It's a throttle body, you know, it will go right there. So Toyota throttle cable, okay, would go right there. So all of these have the same timing cuff. They will have a throttle position sensor because there's a throttle cable that is attached to the throttle body. Now, the modern vehicles, however, you don't see a throttle cable. All you see is a wiring harness. The reason why is because now, this is a Volkswagen unit. It's a throttle body of a Volkswagen Jetta with a 2.5 liter. You don't see a cable. And you don't see two parts anymore. There is no idle air control valve or throttle position sensor separate. It's all in one unit. 
it's all in this part. There's a small motor in here that operates the butterfly. As it gets diff different current from the computer, it opens it. And that is directly related to the sensor on the accelerator pedal. So now, when you're accelerating, the sensor on your pedal, when you step on it, it's going to be sending the signal to the computer, same thing, the computer is going to send the signal to the motor in here and it's going to open and close the butterfly. I'm going to open this so you can see it, okay, because it actually looks kind of cool. So I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to open this up. Okay, so I took the clips off, I'm going to remove the cover. Okay, so if you look at it, it has a small microprocessor in there where the signal comes from. You can see and then this go to this harness. And this is the motor right here. And then here are the gears. And then you can see where the motor gets the power and the ground right there. You can see how the gears move. So it moves your throttle. So completely different setup and it's a little bit more sophisticated than the older systems so most modern vehicles are going to have this they're not going to be separate anymore but it's good to know how it all got started because then it's easier to understand any changes that have been made okay so here's the cover back on so that's the video for today, that's what we're going to focus on. So now you know about the throttle position sensor operation and the idle air control valve. Now you know that the modern vehicles that don't have a cable, it's all in one unit and they're not separate anymore. This way it's easier to understand. This is all the info that's going to be covered in this video. That way I can continue to break it down and it's easier to grasp rather than just giving it all at once, which would make it harder to understand. So, you already know how the fuel is delivered to the injectors, now you know how the throttle position sensor and the idle air control valve affect the way the vehicle runs, and on upcoming videos we'll be focusing on different subjects. I will continue to have the items available for each video, that way you can see them, rather than just try to explain them in some random concept, or trying to draw them out because I know how a visual is more beneficial than just a theory. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.